Hello, hello. I was having a, a lot of trouble to get into the into the meeting because um, I'm having troubles with my, I don't know if it's my connection or my computer, but it is not like working. And I had a lot of troubles with the other group and I don't know if I'm going to have a problem right now with this meeting. So if I am having troubles during the session, I am just saying that I, Feel sorry for the troubles. I don't know what is happening. So I guess I will fix all the problems for the next week because uh, the next week is the last week because now we are in session number four of this week number three. So we are almost, almost, almost at the end of the course. So let me. This is not working. So uh, yesterday we were talking about model verbs versus adverbs. Um, if the, like um, kind of a heavy topic, it's a long topic. Um, but we are going to end today with that topic, this is kind of point, and I know, but we are going to end the information that we have about the model verbs and the adverbs. So give me a moment if I need to change something. Uh, then I was saying is that uh, in that case we were talking about how how is uh, how can we use model verbs how can we use the adverbs uh, what is the uh, most relevant information about um, this topic and uh, the similarities that they have. So now we are going to talk about the uh, difference that we can find in this topic. So in this case, we are going to talk about the difference that we have in this topic. So let me share the screen. I will try to... Okay. So now we are going to talk about the difference between the mobile verbs and the adverbs. So uh, yesterday we were talking about the similarities and now we are going to talk about the difference that we can find in these two words or a group of words. And then we are going to um, use a specific information um, or uses of the model verbs. And then in this part of the difference and the information that we have about the model verbs and the adverbs, then we are going just to talk about the model verbs because we are going to use it for a specific um, purpose. So we are going to end, then we are going to uh, change the topic and we are going to talk about a specific uses of the model verb depending on the situation that we want to use them. And it says that there are times when we cannot use adverbs to convey the same meaning as the model.
And we have the first one. And it says, talking about abilities. And it says we use mobile verbs, can and cool to talk about powers and skills of tasks to do a certain action. We cannot use adverbs to convey the same meaning. En este caso, en las diferencias, vamos a ver en qué situaciones solo podemos utilizar uno de los dos. Y ya tenemos el primero, que es hablar acerca de las habilidades. Vamos a utilizar los modos can en cool para hablar de poderes y de habilidades que posee, ¿verdad? A un, a hacer una acción determinada y que no podemos utilizar adverbs para, para tener el mismo significado en una oración un tanto diferente. Entonces, en este caso, solo vamos a utilizar modal verbs. Then we have the example. We have, I can play cheese. I can play cheese. Puedo jugar ajedrez. That is the, the, the sentence. And we can say, my father could speak seven languages. So in that case, we cannot change um, that uh, sentences using uh, some adverbs. In that case, it is just to use the modal verb. Because in that case, we know what is the meaning of the sentence. And we know what is the action that they are performing or what is the message of the sentence. So in that case, we are just going to use the mobile verb. Then we have the second one. And it says, talking about permission. And it says that we use can, cool, and may to give or ask for permission. May and cool are more formal and polite. And we cannot use adverbs to convey this message. So in this case, we are going to use some specific model words to ask for permission.
So here we have some examples. Can I use your phone? Can I use your phone? Or I use your phone? And may I use your phone? Teacher, the difference is um, the second and the third one, uh, it's more polite than yes. the first one. Yes, of course. The second one and the third one are more polite, and in that case, it's more formal. Even when we are using another, um, in another context. Cool, and may, it's going to be more formal and polite. Siempre esos dos van a sonar más formal que can, porque es, en español lo podemos decir como, puedo utilizar tu teléfono, like that. It's kind of plain, it's kind of rude. Puedo usar tu teléfono? In that case, we can use it for people that we know. But in some cases, when you find uh, older people or people that you don't know very well, you're going to use, may I use your phone? Please, in some cases. ¿Podría usar tu teléfono, por favor? In that case, it's more formal and more polite to use cool and may. But when, if you are talking with your friends, you can use can and it's okay. But when you are talking with someone you don't know very well, or it's uh, in your job, or in the street or something like that, you are going to use cool and may. The next one is to give advice. In this case, it's asking or giving permission uh, to do some actions. And in this case, we are going to ask for um, advices. Vamos a pedir consejos. Or in this case, it's giving, it's dar consejos. Giving advices. And in this case, it's saying that we often use can, could, should, and might to offer solutions or give someone a, a piece of advice. Adverbs, unfortunately, are unable to convey a meaning in this context. In este caso, cuando damos consejos, utilizamos can, could, should, and might para ofrecer soluciones a algún problema. O le damos a alguien una parte o un pequeño eh, consejo y desafortunadamente en este caso si los adverbs no tienen eh, en, en cómo hacer una conversión así que en este caso no hay cómo encontrarle un adverb que pueda transformar esa oración en algo parecido porque aquí solo utilizamos los modal verbs
So in this case, we are going to see some examples of this um, specification. And it says, you should study harder. You should study harder. Deberías estudiar más fuerte, ¿verdad? Because in some cases, you're not uh, having a good grade. So you need to make a, a big effort to complete your assignment. And then we have, he could try adding some salt. So in this case, he's giving an advice to someone that is cooking a, some dishes. So in this case, he could try adding some salt to improve the flavor of the food. Then we have the request, and in this case is another one. Request. So in this case, it's saying it can and could, will, in this case, we are going to use will, and will are used to request something for someone. And we cannot use adverbs to do so. Igual, aquí no podemos utilizar los adverbs, por eso son las diferencias, porque no pueden darle como un significado eh, propio usando sus propias palabras, o sea, sus propios adverbs, a este tipo de acciones. En este caso vamos a utilizar quien could, will, and will. So in this case, we have two examples. And we have the first one, and it says, Will you marry me? Will you marry me? ¿Te casarías conmigo? And the second one, could you pick me up tomorrow? So in that case, we are requesting something. And this part is not uh, talking about the, the difference or the uh, similarities of the adverbs with uh, the uh, model verb. In this case, is the position of the adverbs in a sentence. So in that case, this is the last the difference that we have for the um, model verbs and in the adverbs. Tenemos muy pocas diferencias, si se fijan, eh, de, entre los adverbs y los eh, model verbs. Son más las, las similitudes que ellos tienen que las diferencias. Así que en esta parte del request es la última diferencia, o sea, donde no se puede utilizar el adverb eh, como en los otros ejemplos. And in this case, we are going to talk about the position. We are going to talk about the position of the model verb and the position of the adverb. And uh, that we have negative models and negative adverbs. And it will be the last thing that we are going to use for a uh, both. Because now we are going to change and we are going to talk about just the model verb. Así que estamos a punto de terminar esta parte donde compartimos información de ambos. 
para pasar a eh, los modos, pero de manera más específica. No vamos a hablar de todos los modos, sino que vamos a hablar para situaciones en específico. So in that case, we are going to talk about the position of the address. And it's saying that adverbs are capable of appearing in different positions in a sentence. They must be close to the words that are modifying, which could be at the beginning, in the middle, or at the end of the sentence. So in that case, the adverbs can appear in different places in the sentence because they are following the word that they are modifying. So if the word they are modifying is at the beginning, they are going to be, um, appear at the beginning. If the word is that they are modifying is at the middle of the sentence, it will be appear at the middle of the sentence. And if the word they are modifying are at the end of the sentences, the adverb is going to be at the end of the sentence. So in that case, it's not like it has a specific place in which they uh, may be. In this case, is following the word they are modifying. So now we are going to see some examples of the position of the adverb. And we have the number one, and it says sometimes, in this case at the beginning, sometimes I stop and stir at the start. In this case, we have the word at the beginning. Then we have the second one that is at the middle. I am usually tired. I am usually tired. And the third one that is at the end of the sentence, he is leaving for London next, next week. He is leaving for London next week. So in this case, we have it at the end of the sentence. So in this case, we're going to talk about the position of the mobile verb. And in this case, it is completely different from the adverbs because the adverbs have like, um, we can say a different position in which we can write the words, but the, um, the mobile verbs just have one position. And it's always the same. Así que en este caso, ¿verdad? Que el adverbio el, el adver, eh, puede cambiar de lugar en la oración, 
pues le da mucha más libertad de estar al inicio, en el medio o en el final, pero el model verb tiene una sola posición, es estático, no se mueve de esa posición, no como lo hace el adverb. And it says that they are always used before the main verb. So they are attached to the main verb. So in the, in the place that the main verb is, there will be the model verb. So we are going to see the example. And it says, Victoria must be out of her mind. Victoria must be In this case, we have here the model. And we can know that the main verb in this case is B. So in that case, uh, it's easier to find the main verb because we already know that. In that case, we are going to have the model verb before the main verb. In this case, teniendo esta información y sabiendo que el model um, va a estar siempre antes del member. In that case, uh, we know what is the main verb of this sentence. So, then we have Albert should look after his kids. So in this case, we know that should is the model, and then look is the main verb. And now we're going to see how to use the negative in the adverb and in the model verb. First, we have the negative model. And it says that models can be used to make negative sentence. To do so, we add not to the head of the sentence, which is the model verb.
And today we have the temple. And we have the first one, and it says, I cannot see the stage. And the second one, I won't let them see my sadness. So in the case we uh, just add, they were not as in the many of the structures that we use to create negative sentence that we just add not. So in the case that we are using the auxiliary even, we are going to use not to make it negative. So in this case, it's not the exception because we are going to add not to the note that we are using a negative statement. And for the negative adverbs, it says to make a negative sentence, we can use the negative adverb as no, not, never, ain't, nowhere. En este caso sí es diferente, porque en el modal verb solo le agregamos not al modal y es negativo. En este caso hay adverbios que son específicamente para hacer oraciones en negativa, como lo es no, not, never, and nowhere. So we have two examples. Then we have I have a never seen him before. And the second one, he is nowhere to be found. So in that case, remember that the um, modal verbs are in the category of verbs and the adverbs are words that uh, add some information to the verb, the adjectives, the other verbs, or a complete sentence. And the modal verbs just uh, add information to the verb. And in that case, they have a lot of similarities and they can work very well together. And they have kind of not, not much uh, differences, just uh, some difference that we can find. And for making negative statements, um, in the case of the uh, adverbs, um, they have a specific word for negative statements. And in the... Um, Model verbs, they are going to use the not uh, with the model to make negative sentence. So in that case, we have completed the information that we have about the model verbs and the adverbs. And now we are going to change because we need to talk about a specific use of the model verbs. So in this case, we are not going to use the uh, adverb. We are going to use the model verb, but we are going to talk about a specific moment in which we are going to use the model verb. So in this case, in this case, in this case, we are going to use the model verb for or asking for a permission. That is the first thing that we are going to talk about because we have three categories. But the first one is asking for permission. 
Vamos a ver tres categorías en las que podemos utilizar los model birds. Y el primero es para los permisos, dar o pedir. Entonces, en este caso vamos a hablar, hablar de específicos o momentos específicos en los que vamos a utilizar los model birds. Ya no es como que vamos a volver a ver toda la lista de model birds. En este caso, we're just going to talk about how to ask or give permission using model birds. And it says that use the model birds of permission can or could to indicate whether someone has permission to do something or not. Así que vamos a utilizar can and could para denotar si alguien tiene el permiso de hacer algo o no tiene permiso de hacer una acción. And it says that we are going to use can to say that someone is allowed to do something and cannot or can to say that they um, do not have permission or are not allowed to do something. And in that part, it's very simple because uh, we know that when we are using can, it's because it's something positive and uh, someone can perform an action. And if we are using cannot, we are demonstrating that uh, that person has no permission to do something because it's something negative. So in that case, it's pretty easy to understand that if we use can, is giving permission to do something and cannot is not giving that permission. But we are going to use this one to say that in this case, can um, you said when someone is allowed to do something and cannot I'm going to change the word and it cannot So that's pretty easy to understand that can A for a permission or a, when you are saying that someone can do something and cannot is when a, someone is not a, and have the permission to do something. And we have some examples for that. And we have the first one. Students can register for fall classes beginning next week. O sea, en esa oración donde los estudiantes pueden registrarse para las clases de otoño, 
comenzando la próxima semana, quiere decir que ya está habilitado, que los estudiantes ya pueden llegar a registrarse para poder tener este tipo de clases la próxima semana. En el segundo one it says, children under 10 cannot use the pool without adult supervision. En este caso estamos hablando que los niños menores de 10 años eh, no pueden utilizar la piscina sin la supervisión de un adulto. So in that case, because it's um, very, very dangerous for them because it can be some accidents. So in that case, you need to have an adult to supervise the situation. So, we can also use cool to say that someone was, in that case, we are talking about past, was allowed to do something in the past. We use could not or couldn't to say that they were not allowed to do it. So, in that case, we are going to use can for present time, and we are going to use could for past time. In this case, we have three different examples. And we have the first one, and it says, we could go to any shop in the mall we wanted to. The second one said, both staff and students will use the ice ring. And the third one, it says, we couldn't study in the library after 6 p.m. The 
Then we have another one that is uh, not uh, can or can't. In this case, we are going to use be allowed to. In that case, we are going to use it when we are asking or giving permission because uh, we are talking about that someone is capable to do something or it is enough. But in that case, we are going to use that phrase also to refer to this topic. No solo tenemos el can y el could, sino que también vamos a utilizar el be allowed to. Es como estar eh, o oh, que tiene el permiso de hacerlo. So in that case, we are going to use that phrase when we are giving or asking for permission. So in this case is saying that we use the phrase be allowed to when uh, talking about permission, but not in the sense to are asking for it or granting it. In this case, no es cuando estemos preguntando en sí si por eh, permiso de algo, sino que en este caso es como eh, Cuando va a suceder una situación, for example, we can say, I was allowed by stage after my third attempt. Pude ingresar al backstage, o sea, la parte eh, donde están los artistas, después de mi tercer intento. Entonces, en ese caso, no estamos pidiendo permiso, sino que estamos eh, tratando de hacer algo que al final pues, lo logramos. Or we can say, you are not allowed to use your calculator on your math exam. Eh, no pueden utilizar la calculadora en el examen de matemáticas. ¿Ok? Porque obviamente necesitan hacer eh, el procedimiento y todo eso, entonces está prohibido hacerlo. So in that case, it's not that. Eh, we are asking for permission. In this case, it's to um, have the opportunity to do something or eh, when we are not able to do the action. And also we have for this a specific use of the model verbs that we can use may and may not um, for more formal situation. And this is uh, the thing that was I was saying when you were asking that if we use may or pull, it sounds more formal. And in this case, we are going to use may 
formal formal situations and may not it used to say that someone is not allowed to do something so in that case is when we are going to sound more formal than in the other cases So we have some examples. And it says, Mr. Smith, may I go to the restroom? It's like a question when we need to go to the restroom. Mr. Smith, may I go to the restroom? I remember one time in which we were uh, like studying English at the university and um, we were like very used to ask when we need to go out, we can uh, ask Ken, can I go to the restroom? And in some moments, uh, the teacher uh, was saying that that is not correct because in that case, we can do it but we cannot uh, go out to the room because we are not using the correct word. Así que en este caso estamos utilizando may porque primero es más formal y segundo porque eh, está más acertado, ¿verdad? Al puedo ir al, al baño, pero no hay el sentido de poder hacerlo. Eh, I don't know if I can eh, explain it well. Es como hacer la acción de ir al baño, sí la podemos hacer. Salir para ir al baño, eh, no lo estamos preguntando bien cuando utilizamos el can. Porque en ese caso estaríamos diciendo que si yo como persona puedo ir o puedo utilizar un, un baño. En ese caso, pues todos podríamos hacerlo. Pero ir hasta el lugar es completamente diferente porque no uh, utilizamos la, la palabra correcta. So from that time, when that teacher um, told us to change that use of the word, we use may I go to the restaurant? Because it's um, different, it has a different meaning. Because in that case, we are not talking about the action or uh, of doing something on the restaurant. In this case, it's talking about to go out and go to the the restaurant. So in the case is kind of a different the meaning that we can give to this sentence. And then you may go as soon as you have finished your exam. You may go as soon as you have finished your exam. And the last one, retailers may not sell items below the manufacturer's price. And it says, however, we use the modal verb for permission can when we are giving permission to others. So in that case, when you are giving the permission, you are going to use can.
So we have some examples. And it says, you can borrow my book if you want, Diana. In that case, we are giving permission to Diana to take our book if she wants to use it. And the second one, it says, you can go leave work now as it got it covered. And the last one, some can go with you. In that case, we are giving the permission to someone to do something. So in that case, we are going to use the mobile word can. When refusing a permission to someone, in that case, when we are not going to give permission to someone, we use negative forms of the model of permission, cannot, will not, or uh, want, and shall not, or can. And that is the last uh, thing that we are going to see in this session. So that's the last thing that we're going to um, see about a mobile bird of, of our permission. So we are going to see each other tomorrow. I hope to have a really good night and a great weekend. And we are going to see each other on Monday in the last week of this course. So have a really good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you Monday. Good night. Good night. See you Monday. Good night. Good night. Good night.